Have you been told you need to stop doing what you love, whether it's exercise, running, or a sport? Well, here at Dynamic, we don't like that answer. In this podcast, we'll talk to leaders in the health and wellness space from Southwest Florida to get the solutions you need to get you back to doing what you love. Welcome to the Dynamic Naples Podcast. What's up, John? Oh, not that much. Living the dream. Yeah. Why's that? Oh, because, you know, everybody always lives for their weekends, and I uh, I live for the everyday. Well, you're here every day. Yes. Okay. You see how beautiful this room is? It is nice. It's a great place to be. Very cozy. Good job, Joanna Gaines. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> beautiful wallpaper. I put my foot up here once, and now it's all greasy from my foot. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what are we talking about today, John? Didn't didn't you were supposed to come up with a topic? Because you always ask me every single week, "What are we doing a podcast on?" And then I have to come up with the topic every week. Well, you're the one with all the questions. It's because I'm a deeper thinker than you. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I already did my deep thinking in my 20s and 30s. Done with that part. So I'm reading this uh, book on Einstein. I am really loud. And he, all of his great discoveries, like the photoelectric effect, special theory of relativity, general theory of relativity, like everything we know him for, mm-hmm. like discovering how gravity works as we currently know it, He did before he was 40. And he really didn't do anything after 40. And this is true of a lot of of great theorists and scientists and physicists and mathematicians. All of their great discoveries, like Newton as an example, like created calculus when he was 25. There's a really funny joke that like, uh, you know, if you feel like you're behind, like Newton didn't learn calculus until he was 25, but he (laughs) created it. (laughs) Um. So yeah, all these great scientists, they they really have all their great discoveries when they're young and rebellious, and then they just get old and stubborn, and I don't want that to happen, because obviously, it's obvious, like, very clearly happening to you, (laughs) and I just don't want that to happen to me. Don't have kids. (laughs) Well, he he had kids young. He had kids before he found out about general relativity. But didn't he, like... Basically abandoned them? He abandoned one of them. We don't know what happened <laughs> to that one. Not, he, you know, you have, like, if you have a whole bunch of kids, it's okay if you abandon one of them. A lot of percentages. God. <laughs> We're not airing this, are we? <laughs> <laughs> so no, there no. you go. I'm 45, so it makes sense. Yeah. I, I did all my deep thinking in my 30s, and that's when I got into PT and all that. Yep. So now I'm just on cruise control. Yep. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. So the value of physical therapy... Mm-hmm. What is it? It's good for everybody. It's good for everybody. Yeah. Why? Well, so first of all, you don't have to be in pain to be in physical therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're, yes, pain and injury is what we're kind of known for, but we are biomechanics experts, and we can help improve performance. So and a lot of PTs, such as myself, are kind of moved away from just the rehab component and moving into sort of this performance model where it's like we're not just getting you back to normal. We're trying to get you past normal and performing better and keeping injury away and keep you basically living a healthy life. That's the, the quick summary. We discussed some of the differences between uh, physical therapy, massage therapy, and a couple other modalities in our podcast about massage. I think mm-hmm. that's what it was. What was the name of that episode? Something like how does massage work? Yeah. Yeah. So we discussed some of the differences there. Physical therapy can really do a lot of different things, right? You can do joint manipulations. Mm-hmm. You can do mobility training. You can mm-hmm. do strength training. Mm-hmm. You can also do the massage therapy as well. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else I'm missing there for what the scope of practice of a physical therapist? Well, that's just in the orthopedic realm, right? So there's also people that um, you know specialize in pediatrics, specialize in neuro. You know, I have some neuro training myself. Uh, in fact, I do a lot of vestibular training, which is like for vertigo and dizziness. Um, we also, you know, we learn about all the systems in the body, not just the muscular system. 
So um, I kind of see us as like we can quarterback people's health because we, we can talk nutrition, we can talk movement, we can talk, you know, basically everything you need to live a healthy life. It's not just the movement part. Mm-hmm. And now there's a lot more people who are becoming cash-based physical therapists versus mm-hmm. insurance-based physical therapists. What's the, why is this movement happening? Why are a lot of physical therapists trying to move away from the insurance-based model? Yeah, I mean, the writing's been on the wall for a long time. Uh, I mean, the short answer is we can give better care this way. We all went into this because we want to help people. I'd say the majority of physical therapists kind of have that giver personality, and they, they want to be able to help people. Um, and when you get into the insurance world, you're like, oh, this is not really what I signed up for. Um, it's really – what happens is the insurance companies have been, over the years, cutting back, cutting back on reimbursement. So what that leaves is a situation where physical therapists, or the owners at least, have to make the physical therapist see two, three, four patients at once. And if you're listening to this and you've been in sort of traditional PT, I'm sure you've been through it and seen how frustrating that can be. So, you know, I, I, you know, at one point I was seeing something like 30 patients a day, and not only seeing them but having to document on all of them. So um, what tends to happen is the therapy gets a lot more watered down. It gets more cookie-cutter. Everyone gets the same exercise because at this point you're just trying to survive your day. And, you know, I think this has happened to a lot of practitioners, not just physical therapists. I think a lot of physicians probably feel this way, and I think there's a similar push to concierge. Concierge um, uh, medical doctors are doing that. It's pretty much the same model because they can give better quality care the way they want to do it. Yes, you pay a bit more, but it's better quality care. That's, that's the short and dirty of it. When we do this podcast, why are you always looking off into space somewhere different? Um, I don't want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just concentrating. So how exactly, like, when you're in a session, let's just go, like, real micro, and then we can maybe zoom out a little bit. Mm-hmm. When you're in an a phys- insurance-based physical therapy, which you did for a while, like, how many years were you in insurance PT? Probably about eight years. When you were in insurance-based PT, what were the day-to-day things you noticed in that model like how is insurance that model holding you back or like what how exactly was the the care like how would you describe it um so first of all it's very limited right so um and let's go like in a session how do those how does it all feel so all right first of all there's just the chaos because you you know you have maybe two or three patients you're seeing at once and you're trying to do something manual therapy oriented on one person while you're trying to buy time with somebody else. So maybe you're putting them on the bike for 10 minutes, which is kind of garbage. It's just like, yeah, go do that because I need some time to work on this person. And they maybe flip-flop back and forth. Now you finish your manual therapy with that person, put them on the bike, and then grab the other one, then they get their manual. You know, that's – okay, there's a little bit of benefit in biking, but it's just not really – I, I guarantee you majority of patients feel pretty frustrated with that. Before we move on anywhere else, why – were you seeing more than one patient at the same time in insurance-based PT? So my experiences uh, observing insurance-based PT was not the case. They were doing one-on-one, and it was 45-minute sessions. Oh. But why were you – why was that the model of the company you worked for? Because what happens is uh, healthcare providers, well, the, the companies have to negotiate contracts with insurance companies – to decide on what they're going to get reimbursed. So maybe they do 45-minute sessions, and, you know, company A says we're going to pay you this amount of money, right? And some of these insurances have cut back so far where I remember getting, like, $15 for a session for, like, a 45-minute treatment, you know? It's kind of weird to be, like, a doctor of physical therapy and make 15 bucks uh, for the company, not even for you. <laughs> um, and that's it. You know, I used to be a personal trainer in Miami, make, like, 10 times that amount of money. <laughs> Uh, so the, the reimbursement just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. That's, that's really what it boils down to. So with insurance companies, it's kind of like they'll take the lowest bidder. The lowest bidder is often the insurance-based physical therapy practice that's putting a whole bunch of people together, doing shorter sessions, and providing. Well, I wouldn't say it's like a bitter thing. It's more like, you know, I, I've never negotiated contracts, so I can't say exactly. But if they, if one company wants say $30 for one unit of therapeutic exercise. The unit's roughly 15 minutes. So if they want $30, the insurance company comes back and says, okay, we'll give you 50% of that or whatever it is. So they negotiate rates. That's how 
how it works. I don't know the numbers exactly, but I just know over the years, you have to see more and more uh, patients as a physical therapist. So there, that's the sort of money part. So, so for the uh, owner, they have to have the therapist see tons of people just so they can pay the bills and pay the therapist. And the profit margin is super thin. Uh, on the other side, there's also the care. So you have to, for insurance to pay for physical therapy, you're going to need a script from a physician. And what that script says is what you're limited to. So if you get a script for knee pain, well, guess what? You can only really touch the knee. If they come in their hips bothering them or their ankle, which usually is the case with a knee injury, because usually the neighboring joint is the issue, you can't really touch it. You have to stick to the knee, which can be very frustrating. So now you're just doing symptom care. You're not improving anything. So the way the body works, if you have an area where there's pain, that's where the symptoms show up. Usually the next joint is where the real problem is. So if you just treat the pain, treat the pain, it's going to keep coming back until you resolve the underlying cause. And we all know this as therapists. So it's super frustrating. And that's what you see. You see the same people come in for the same issue over and over again. It's kind of like a, just a, a wheel. It just keeps going on and on. And as far as the pay scale goes for the customer side of things, so oftentimes um, there's a copay involved even though you're going to an insurance PT, what does that copay usually look like and why Why do you have to pay a copay? Uh, that's just how the, the insurance companies make money. Is they, um, they have a deductible, first of all. So it's confusing. They're all different. But basically, most people have a high copay, or sorry, a high deductible of, say, three to $6,000. Now, if you haven't met that, you're still going to pay that before therapy is covered. So if you have not met your deductible and you go to a therapist and the script says three times a week for four weeks, that's like 12 visits in a month, right? Usually you're going to have to re-up because you're getting you know, crappy quality of care. So maybe it's going to be two months. That's 24 visits within a two-month time frame. So it's 24 hours of your life, not to mention the travel back and forth, plus a copay for each of those, and then whatever the therapist bills for all those sessions. So say I've seen copays as high as $77 per visit. So let's say 77 times 24 visits, whatever that math is. And then what else, uh, whatever is billed to your insurance, if that has not been met by your deductible, you're at the end of that therapy care, you're going to have a bill for that amount. And that's typically around $3,000. How common is it to have a copay as high as $77? That's less common. Um, I, I don't know what the average is these days. I've been out of that game for a while, but probably 20 to 30 is a little more usual. And is it common for people to have to extend their physical therapy up to 24 sessions? I've seen that a lot. I'd say more often than not, yep. Um, and then with... I would say with that, it depends on the chronicity and severity. So if it's an issue that's been going on for a long time, like more than a month, or if it's a little more complex, like more than one joint, or... Um, oops, silence that. Um, that's going to tend to take a little more time. Whereas something like acute, like a little ankle sprain that just happened last week, that tends to get better way faster. Now, describe the relationship between a physical therapist and a physical therapy assistant, how often that works in insurance-based PT. So it's pretty common to hire a PTA uh, in that setting because they, they cost the company a lot less money. The only difference really is that a physical therapist can do the assessment, evaluation, and the discharge, and the reevaluation. So all the assessment visits only the physical therapist can do, but the PTA can do all the follow-up treatments. I have gone to physical therapy a few different times for some lower back pain, which uh, was some sort of incredible mystery that nobody was able to solve for some reason. I don't understand. And I went to the physical ther- the same physical therapist on two different occasions for the back pain, and I met with a the physical therapist. They did like an assessment, and then they put like a heat pad on my back, and then I was with the PTA for the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. I would show up. We'd do 45 minutes of some exercises. Some felt pretty random. And then, uh, and then I would leave in the same amount of pain that I came in with. Mm-hmm. Why was I seeing a physical therapy assistant even though I had come back multiple times with the same pain symptoms? Well, because the PTA can't do evaluations. So all the evaluations get put on the PT schedule. So unless the PT doesn't have a full set of evaluations for the day... Um, they're only doing those assessment type visits Mm -hmm. and that that gets even more complicated right so every 10 visits you have to do a reevaluation which means the pt has to do it 
once the patient's last visit, the PT has to do it. Uh, and then certain insurances require um, evaluations more often. So I know that a lot of work comp cases, you have to do a reval every six visits. Because these insurance companies have figured out the more the therapist does a reevaluation, the more likely they're going to discharge them sooner. They've actually done the math on this stuff. I think part is the, because it's so much paperwork, the therapist just ends up discharging people too early. Um, so because of that, the physical therapist is just occupied with so many evaluative uh, type visits that the PTA does all the follow-ups. And so cash-based physical therapy, how has that grown in the past few years? Why has it grown in the past few years? Because th- I think there's just a need for it. Right? First of all, physical therapists are getting burnt out, and they're sick of this, so it's just not what we got into the field for, to do this sort of crappy care uh, where everyone you know, kind of feels ma- marginally better at best or, like you said, just felt the same. And you keep doing the same thing over and over. It's, it's frustrating. Um, and you're only working, you're either working with numerous patients at the same time or you're not even working with the patient, you're just doing the eval. Exactly. It just feels like you're surviving the day. You're just clocking in, surviving your schedule, and that's it. It's, it's really hard to have the energy to provide quality care and to give people like actual custom-built programs that they need it's just like, okay, here's the low back pain protocol, here's the knee protocol, and it's just uh, it's, it's, it's frustrating as a therapist. And then on the customer end, it's, it's just as frustrating. So the only people that are really making out are the business owners and insurance companies. So a lot of therapists are like, well, let's just get out of that whole situation and just pay, you know, have people pay cash if they want to and give a better quality care. Now, what are the differences with the type of care you can provide as a cash pay phys- physical therapist? Who are you beholden to? And how do those things affect how you treat a patient? Are there any limitations? There are some limitations. So it depends on the state you're in, too. So in Florida, I can see somebody for 30 days without a script. Uh, and I can, do, I can evaluate whatever I want. Obviously, I have to know some red flags. If there's certain conditions I suspect, like, let's say, cancer, I have to refer out. Outside of, outside of that, in the cash-based setting, I can do and treat whatever I want for up to 30 days without a script. Um, so what that means is you come in with shoulder pain and knee pain, I can treat them both. If I'm working on your shoulder and then one day you're like, I slept funny and my neck feels weird, I can do a quick little evaluation on that and then fix the neck. So it really, I mean, then it's like wide open. You can do whatever you want. And now on the customer side of things, how, how does the process change? So they're not coming in with a prescription. They're coming in and finding you. How are they finding you? Because with... Insurance-based PT usually go to your doctor. You're like, hey, I got knee pain. They write you a prescription. They say, go here. Right, it's so, a little different with cash. Well, so that was part of the push towards physical therapists having a doctorate. Um, so first of all, we have doctorates now across the board. Um, well, every PT school now is doctorate only. You, can't, you can no longer get a master's or a bachelor's. It's only doctorate. And let me just say, a doctorate is just a degree. It doesn't mean we think we're medical doctors. A lot of people say, oh, you're not a real doctor. It's like, I really have a doctorate. I'm just not a medical doctor, right? So I can't prescribe medicine. But what it does allow me to do is be a point of access. So that was the reason the APTA, the Physical Therapy Association, wanted to push for 100% doctorates across the board so we could have what's called direct access. So you can see me first. You don't have to go see a physician. Uh, I think that's a really good idea because we can spend so much more time with clientele that we get to see a full body workup, right? You know, you get to move people's joints around. We get to get a thorough history, whereas a lot of physicians are stuck in this, you know, model that is our healthcare system, and they get maybe five minutes with you. So they're just getting a quick little gloss over of what's going on with you and I'm sure a lot of them would say, you know, I wish I could treat them better, but I can only treat the symptom because that's the only time I have. Now, for the customer, like I said, you usually go to the doctor. They say go to this uh, physical therapist, and then you go to the physical therapist. You just call them and schedule an appointment, right? There's no, like, discovery. How does a customer find a cash-based physical therapist if they, if they listen to this podcast? They're like, you know, that sounds a lot like more what I need than mm-hmm. – you have this insurance situation. They just call us. <laughs> they find us this way. They find us through social media outlets. Is that what you mean? Yeah. How? Like, what? What are the discovery processes like? Just type it into Google, cash based PT near me. What's the? Yeah, I would type in like physio near me or performance physical therapist near me. Um, 
you can go to my website, drchrisellis.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, you'll probably be able to tell by the website if it's a cash-based PT or not. They're going to probably have a section describing why they don't bill insurance. Um, and you'll see a lot of uh, – it's going to be a lot more – problem-based uh, stuff on the website, where you see a typical insurance clinic. It's like, we treat tendonitis, you know, knee arthritis, whereas this is going to be like, we're going to help you move better, make you feel better. So I think the verbiage around the website is going to help you figure out, okay, this is a performance PT. This is not just about conditions, it's about the whole person. Mm-hmm. And now there's some rules around like Medicare people, right? People who are 65 and over. Yes, it's a weird rule. So if you have Medicare, if you're 65 or older and a Medicare beneficiary, we're not legally allowed to charge somebody uh, outside of Medicare if it's medically necessary. So in other words, if you – and so what is medically necessary in Medicare's mind? That's a gray area, but it's usually described as uh, you have a functional deficit. So there's, there's two uh, phrases. Do you have a functional deficit and is this skilled PT? If those conditions are yes and yes, then that would um, you'd be able to use Medicare to pay for physical therapy. So if you're having difficulty getting out of bed, walking, reaching your cabinets, doing the things that activities of daily life, that's considered a functional deficit. And if that requires skilled PT, then we have to use Medicare to uh, pay for therapy services. And cash-based physical therapists cannot bill Medicare. Correct. So for those of you listening who are 65 and up, and you hear, okay, like this thing is limiting me. I got a prescription from a doctor. You won't be able to go see a cash based physical right, that, therapist. I would have to refer out. And there are clinics in town that I do like, that I do refer to. There is a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a loophole, um, but if you are more concerned with performance or wellness, then we can work with you because Medicare does not cover that service. So in other words, if you're just stiff and you like to golf, uh, Medicare doesn't care about golf. So we could, you know, theoretically – improve this through exercise, improve your stiffness, and improve your golf game. That we could do. Now, when people listen to this and they think about like the differences, it sounds like there might be more efficiency in cash-based physical therapy. Is that true? And can people expect like their pain to be resolved faster when they see a cash-based physical therapist? Or is it just going to depend on the therapist? Like, you could go to insurance-based PT. If the therapist is really good, it's, it's mostly going to be about the therapist. I think it's a lot easier for a therapist to get someone better in a cash-based setting. There are great therapists out there that can handle two, three patients at once and still are able to do it and give quality care, but that's harder to find. In a cash setting where you have the time and it's all one-on-one, it's, it's going to just tend to be better care because you have one-on-one time. You have the energy, first of all. You have uh, typically most visits are an hour, as opposed to thirty or forty-five minutes, um, and you can do be just you can just be more thorough. So yeah. Now yeah, so let's back away from the seeing two or three patients at a time because that's not everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like the the insurance based practice that I operated, like alongside, I operated on the training side. They had a physical therapy side of the business. They were doing one on one. They were working with the physical therapist. They mm-hmm. didn't even have people see PTAs. The sessions were forty-five minutes. You were with the doctor the whole time. Um, However, I've spoken to my good friends who worked there very recently. One of them now works for a healthcare company that really gives them no oversight at all. Uh-huh. And he doesn't have to directly bill or document to insurance. So he kind of operates as a cash PT, even though it's uh-huh. not necessarily exactly what he does. And just like the amount of freedom he has to roam is a lot better. So do you think... Good therapists can get bound by the model, and they can get kind of like watered down even though they're really good. And well, do you think a good physical therapist will just operate better? Like they'll shine more in a cash-based setting? Oh, definitely. I, it just gives you room to breathe and gives you time. But So your friend does not bill insurance and does not document? So it's – I forget what the name of the company is. Uh-huh. They – pretty much provide um, like a whole bunch of health services Mm -hmm. for corporate companies to lower the insurance rates of the corporate company. Sounds like general wellness. Yeah, like a general wellness company. Got it. So pretty much he like they have uh, physical therapists. I think he's the only one in that particular location. Mm -hmm. They have trainers. They have activities that they do. 
that drives down the cost of insurance. But pretty much people can just go see him for whatever. Uh-huh. And just because he's there, that's the only thing that the insurance company cares about is that they have a physical therapist like on staff, quote uh-huh. unquote. What's the question? <laughs> you asked me a question. You said he doesn't have the document. So you asked me about okay. why. So I just Yeah, that sounds did. like a pretty sweet gig. Yeah, uh, he loves it. Yeah, that's he probably, loves it. probably won't leave there anytime soon. Uh, do I think therapists can shine more in a cash based setting? Yeah, absolutely. Now also, you know, besides what I talked about, the one on one setting, besides the having energy, you're just going to tend to have more time, which means you're going to tend to research more, which means reading articles and evidence and being more on top of your game. Like when I was uh, in the insurance world, you know, I'd get out at like six o'clock, go home, I have to document more. Sometimes it wouldn't get done to eight. It's not like I'm going to go see what's new in, you know, evidence world at 8 o'clock at night, you're exhausted. So in this setting, you tend to just, you're, you're blogging, you're podcasting, you're creating content, and in that process, you're digging up all the newest research. So I think it really sharpens your sword. Let's get to the point about cost, because the cost is different. Mm-hmm. Um, what do typical cash-based PTs charge? It totally varies where you are in the country. Uh, it's going to be relative to, you know, co- cost of living where you live. I'd say sort of a median is usually around 200 a session, something like that. Uh, and most PTs are going to have packages of six or ten or something like that. That's why I do six visits or ten visits. I kind of reserve six visits to more acute problems, things that just happened, whereas ten tends to be for something that's a little more complex or a, more, a little more um, chronic. So, you know, that could be up to roughly $2,000, not quite, uh, which sounds like it might be pricey. But if you compare that to what we talked about earlier, we are seeing a traditional therapist two to three times a week for four weeks times two. So all that time, all those co-pays, and then if you have not made your deductible, it turns out to be way cheaper to do it this way and way more time efficient. So let's say somebody sees a physical therapist uh, 20 times for let's say a thirty dollar copay, which is probably pretty standard. Um, that's six hundred dollars. It's twenty total hours, six hundred dollars. You're saying at two hundred dollars an hour, you are going to see them ten times, get the same amount of care, but you're still, uh, you know, three x, four x the cost. Well, don't forget if if they have not met their deductible, they'll get a surprise bill at the end, and that. The average cost of care for a plan of care for physical therapy is about three thousand dollars. So it's the time plus the copays plus whatever the bill is at the end. Mm-hmm. How common is the bill at the end? It's that's what you get unless you've hit your deductible. So okay. if you you know if you just had surgery and you hit your deductible, that's a different story. But if this is your first thing you're dealing with that year, and don't forget resets every year, your deductible, then you're paying out of pocket. It just doesn't seem like it because up front, you, you don't, you know, the therapist is submitting charges. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, when somebody looks at the, the price tag of cash-based physical therapy, um, like how is it, apart from some of those little nuances with the insurance, with the, the co-pays and the deductible, like how do... How do people sort of stomach that and say, like, okay, for 10 visits at $200 an hour versus the other things that I could do and also going through my insurance? Like, how does that, how does that all make sense to the person? Well, you know, it's really about solving a problem, you mm-hmm. know. So if you just have, like, a little annoying ache, they're probably not going to want to do this. But if they're, like, they want to go hiking with their wife and they can't go up and down stairs because the knee hurts so much, that's a problem that we can solve. Uh, so I think once they understand that that's what we can solve, it becomes a easier thing to stomach, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I brought this up to you the other day. I paid eighteen hundred dollars for new <laughs> new tires on my truck. That, that solved me a problem. You know, that's, that's all it is. We're just trying to fix your quality of life so you can operate better and be happier. Um, do you find that people are fairly resistant to the cost? Um. Not really. Recently, a bit. I'm not sure if inflation is or whatever is happening. Um, maybe it's playing into it. But generally speaking, most people are ready to pull out their card and, and do it. Who do you think is a good fit for cash-based physical therapy versus insurance-based physical therapy? 
Um, I'd say insurance-based, well, first of all, you have to do your research to find a place that does one-on-one care because the majority of them are not one-on-one. Um, so maybe someone's post-op might be a good fit for insurance-based. You know, that's, that's not to say that we're not a good fit also. I think we are a great fit for that too. But under the circumstances, if you want it all paid for and you just had surgery, then you're probably going to want to go the insurance route. Um, someone that's a little more inter- interested in like a full-body approach so like, it's like a rotator cuff repair. You're pretty much going to work on the rotator cuff and the scapular muscles, right? So that's not, not necessarily a full body approach. Someone who wants to figure out why they can't get deep on their squats or maybe they're having pain when they're squatting or some, something like that, like a barbell athlete or a crossfitter or someone who's into a certain sport that can't play the sport, that's going to be a little more of a full body approach. I think that's sort of the perfect fit for um, a cash-based performance clientele. clientele. Now, if somebody's in pain, they want to get out of pain, they've heard of some other things they could do, like massage therapy, go to a chiropractor, Mm -hmm. um, go see a a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's the value of physical therapy over those things? It gets the root cause. So this goes to sort of the rock in the shoe example. Have you heard that? So if you have a rock in your shoe, like you could put another – insole in there and another insole until you feel less and less and so you're just kind of treating the symptom but if you never remove the rock in the shoe it's always going to be there so that's how we see ourselves so we remove the root cause so stuff like and some of the stuff we do too is for symptoms so massage cupping scraping joint manipulation aka adjustment we have different verbs for it um, all that type of thing those like hot back skull backs those are all for symptom relief but it's just going to keep coming back until you fix the root cause. So somewhere up and down the chain, you're going to find some sort of restriction, either a, a mobility restriction or a strength issue that's causing the problem. So that's what we try to do is address the underlying problem. Gotcha. Um, I think that's all of the questions I have. Is there anything else you want to add based on what you feel like I didn't touch on? No, I think you covered it all. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, so I guess just check out our website, com if you want some more information. Yeah, and go to the physical therapy page. There's a book a free call option if you do live in the Naples area. But even if you don't and you want some like online physical therapy, you can do that as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We do offer some remote coaching. We have all kinds of di- uh, packages for different things. The best thing to do is to get on a call. Get on a call with me so there's a direct link to my calendar uh, and because I, I like to – give information. Uh, I like to talk. I'm a total, total nerd. I love talking physical therapy. So if you want to just get a phone call to see what might be the best fit for you, I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So go do that. And, um, yeah, just realize there's, there's a lot of value in, in physical therapy because these guys really know what they're doing, right? They, they understand a physical therapist is a biomechanics expert at the end of the day. They know the musculoskeletal system, really better than anybody out there that's their area of expertise they know it better than a trainer Um, they know it better than a doctor they just know that system so well so if you're having movement deficiencies that are causing pain and discomfort the physical therapist is who you want to see and you want to be able to try to work with a physical therapist who has the range of motion to actually uh, express their expertise because if you go to one of your friends who's a physical therapist and you don't go through insurance, you just say, hey, dude, I, like my shoulder hurts. They're going to give you a completely different recommendation than if they work in the insurance-based setting and they have to go document everything. Correct. Um, so these are the guys you want to see if you're having trouble moving in good positions and you're having pain, you're having pain bending over or squatting down or lifting your shoulder. The physical therapist who you want to see, the pain doctors, because that's a thing apparently, um, acupuncturists like all these people they just don't quite understand biomechanics the way a physical therapist does that's that's really the big difference in my opinion yeah and just remember you don't have to be in pain if, if you just want to perform better too that's what we can help you do so if, let's take the knee for example in squats right some people's knees cave in a little bit when they squat is that an issue only if it's an issue if it's painful that's one thing but you also will bleed torque. So in other words, with uh, less than optimal positioning of your body, you're going to lose some power output. So those are the things we understand as well. So it doesn't, it's not always about pain. Yes, we can solve that. 
And then when I say we can get you performing better, that's what I'm talking about. So we can get you into an optimal position. Optimal positions, optimal people, <laughs> optimal price points, nutrition. optimal nutrition. There you go. All those things. Yes. Let me quarterback your health. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, go away. All right. I'm done with this. All right, John. Bye. Do you have unexplained pain, or do you wonder just how healthy you are? When was the last time you had your blood tested? Blood chemistry analysis is a great way to stay ahead of any health conditions, and now you can have control of your health with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an incredible company that sends blood tests to your home. You can choose from over 30 different tests, whether that's liver function, testosterone, micronutrient, cholesterol, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It's sent to you with free shipping, and you get your results in two to five days, no physician referral needed. Use the code DPT30 for 30% off. Go to letsgetcheck.com and use the code DPT30. Did you know that you can get started with physical therapy without a physician's referral? Physical therapists don't just solve pain. We get down to the root cause and keep it from coming back. We also discuss all things health, such as nutrition and lifestyle changes. If you feel that you could use some help, let's get on a free console call. Go to www.dynamicnaples.com and sign up for a free call. Also, if you like this podcast, please give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us spread the message. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.